Customer states, vehicles spitting and sputtering, won't idle past a grand and a half, 1500, 2000 RPM. Did my regular diagnosis, didn't think about checking the gas because I honestly didn't, I didn't think it ever happened to me. It's dry. I mean, it's, it's Arizona desert in the summer, dry. 50 bucks. So, a few days later, a uh, customer agreed to basically fix everything on the 300. Obviously, I'm not replacing the entire body because it's an old 300. I'm going to give it at least that much respect. We are, however, going to be fixing all the bullshit that's been on this bike over the years. Now, it's not a bad build, okay? It's on these beautiful 30s, high lifters. The SS wheels, gorgeous. Body is actually decently clean. It's obviously been smacked a few times. So we're going to be working on cleaning that up some. I have a new VR coming for it. I'm going to be reinstalling and re-initiating the electric start on this machine. I'm going to be fixing all the little bullshit that's all over this bike. I'm going to be yanking the tank off so I can get to a new ignition coil, ignition wire, new spark plug. All that stuff is getting replaced. And new battery, everything. So I'm going to put you all up, kind of go through what I'm doing. Let's just have fun with it. Let's see what happens. I really wish Milwaukee was sponsoring this video. They're not. I had the tank most of the way drained so that way you know it, I'm not going to cause a serious a crazy serious mess definitely might leak a little bit though uh, turn this off I'm actually counting on it leaking kind of something like that sit right there so it doesn't run out of the pet cap. Move the gas cap off to the side here. Now I have decently easy access to the coil right here. Basically it's molded mounted to the frame. Decently easy access to it. Snorkel makes it a little bit more difficult. I just really want to remove that and get out of the way. Should be able to get to it. If not I'll just kind of cut it off and get the wire out of the way. But I'd like to do it the right way because I have a new coil that actually mounts in the factory spot coming for this rig. That's fine. If I can find the hole. Yep. The winch, the, the winch is not even wired up. Get that tight. I'm kind of just going to bounce around for now. I don't have all the parts in yet. So I don't really, I can't do a whole hell of a lot without having all the parts in. Um, I I'm talking about there's a coil right here. That's what I got to get to. I'm going to be cutting this off, cutting this off, trying to get to it. This, I just did this on Sunday too. Whatever. Just zip ties. They're cheap. Rubber freight, baby. 99 cents for a pack. Boom. Nearly as much as I was hoping it would. But it might have moved enough. Man, nope, that's in the way. Man, I don't want to fully remove these plastics. I don't, I really, I really, really don't. Plus, that's 
the snorkel is that's going to make it impossible to remove the plastics. So I don't have a choice but to just kind of figure it out. Then what I should have done in the first place, broke out Old Faithful, got off in three seconds. So that's what we're working. So there's the hole way back in there. This is the grounding straps that go on top of that. This is what they rigged up, which, I mean, it works. Like, it fires it, but it's definitely not happy. So we're going to be getting this replaced back to factory. Got a new VR coming in, factory battery coming in, starter solenoid coming in. Got the new switch coming in. Everything is coming in for building this bike. This is just part one. I just want to get a little bit of work done on this thing. Kind of get it cleared out. For I Basically, like I said in the prelude, it would rev perfectly fine the second you started it. But after that, it would bog out after 15% throttle. Just bog out, backfire. I am going to clean the carb. That is going to happen. All that stuff. So I'm just kind of getting myself set up for success here. Get some stuff out of the way. This is a customer's bike, so I don't want to hold it forever. So here we go. All right. Welcome back to day two of working on the customer 300 here so got some parts in last night basically all the parts i need to put the gas tank back in uh get that back in there and hopefully stop the leak uh from the fuel tank also got the new ignition coil here as well as a new spark plug which this is just temporary because this is some cheap chinese ones this is a very temporary thing I got four legit NGK plugs coming, but this is just going to fill the gap for now and basically be my known good spark plug tester. So this is what I got for the fuel tank here. I got the nice filters, right? The screens to keep all the rust and what have you from getting into the actual pet cock and into the... Send it. Uh, and actually getting into the fuel system. So that's good. You can see right here is obviously where your pet cock plugs into. Now the cool thing about this pet cock is there is a gasket down here that will just, as you tighten onto this, will just tighten that gasket, sealing it up. And then this just plugs right into the tank, filters the gas going into the tank. Obviously you want to make sure that you have your pet cock orientation facing out. But, you know, just want to say it just for the sake of it. Does this one already still have one in it? I think it does. There it goes. Now it's just coming out. Just had to get it started. Yeah, that's probably not helping <laughs> any of the situation. Jesus. I don't know. I bet you there wasn't much if it, wow. That would, that would cause a problem. That's probably factory. All right, as I was saying, get that wiped off. Get it started. Make sure you keep your petcock orientation where you want it. Grab your strips everything pliers and you don't want to go crazy because this is plastic this grommet up here is plastic so you want to make sure you just just half an ugga dugga right you don't want to go full ugga dugga force not to mention we can come back and adjust later as needed Good to start with. Make sure the fuel stays off. And we're gonna put the gas tank back on the bike. Got my fuel line right here. Everything's out of the way. I went ahead and redid these winch lines. I wanna make sure I put the gas tank in. I can still get to that, which is gonna be an absolute negative. So first things first, before I put the gas tank in, I gotta replace all the ignition coil supplies. So, check it out. What you can see is right here is where my ignition coil goes. It goes and bolts into. Oh, there's a ground right here too. Why is there a ground? There's grounds everywhere. I don't even know what this. 
not even connected to anything. Gas tank's on, gas is in the on position, CDI's up, spark plug's in, that's all in, Let's see what happens. What? So this is take three. Helps if you have the ignition on. Just don't worry about that. It's fine. So, got it all figured out 37 and a half minutes later. Playing this game again. So not cutting the throttle either so I really think it's something electrical I don't think it's carburetor or I know it's not spark because when it starts up it starts up great and then it literally just goes Wah-pa! Wah-pa! like it's the V the VR or the CBI box is saying mm -mm, don't like it don't like it kill it don't like it kill it uh, self protection mode. So, I got the new VR on the way. Got a new battery on the way. A new star solenoid. Probably order a new kill switch here. Um, possibly a VR box. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just making this up as I go. So, the guy doesn't know any history on it. He basically bought it and just sat on it for a year. So, we're starting from square zero. So, anyway, guys. Thanks for watching episode one. I'll have episode two probably posted sometime next week when the rest of the parts get in. 
and then I'll probably just wind up, you know, drinking myself into oblivion because it still isn't going to be fixed. But with all the cut wires and everything on this, there's no real way to know what the exact issue is except with trial and error. So anyway, peace.